learn from the salmon. The salmon is the chief of the fish. So the salmon gather at the mouth and he will go against the current. And he's gonna go past the sea lions, the bears, the fishermen, the eagles, the ospreys. A lot of them get taken out, but he ain't got no fear. He's going right up that river. And when he gets to the falls, he jumps that fall. He don't make it, he jumps it again. He falls back, he don't make it, he jumps again. He falls back, he don't make it, he jumps again. Until finally that salmon, that big old salmon, makes it up over the top of that fall. And he continues. And even when he gets to the nets, a lot of them will get taken, but they keep on going up the falls, against the current, up the falls, until they get to little bitty bitty tributary creeks that are four feet wide, two feet deep, way up into the back country. And he'll pump them eggs into the rocks, and them little eggs, a lot of them get taken by the sucker fish, and fishermen taking the eggs. But a lot of them survive, and them little bitty salmon, the size of your little finger, they start their journey. Do they go against the current? No. Do they go up against the falls? No. They got it easy. And that little salmon, he goes with the current, with the flow of the river. He goes down the falls. He goes with the current, down the falls, with the current, until finally, he gets to the ocean where he lives a life, but the memory, 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 memory of making a world for the kids still exists inside the blood of that salmon. In other words, that salmon made a world for the children. The little kids are special that are coming to this earth at this time. When you look at these little kids, they look you in the eye, and they say, what are you doing? Are you doing anything for me? We have to make a world for the children. In this culture ride, maybe 180, 170 years ago, the place was a paradise. I mean, the, the, the runs of salmon were so thick that people were afraid to put their boats in the water for they'd capsize. The, the salmon were so thick that horses were afraid to get in the water. You could hear them for miles before you see them, the runs of salmon. And they're absolutely hammered. They're, they're on the brink of extinction. In the last nine years since I've been here, I've seen probably 30 adult salmon. You would have been able to see 30 adult salmon in one second of looking at one creek. It's only when all of the fish are gone that this current group of humanity on Mother Earth will learn that you can't eat money. Not planning on living sustainably gives you a competitive advantage because you can destroy the land base to make your navy to go wipe out the next people. There's always been one more hill you can go over or one more lake you can fish out or one more river you can dam. It's the fundamental difference between Western and indigenous ways of being is that even the most open-minded Westerners view listening to the natural world as a metaphor as opposed to the way the world really works. Indigenous peoples the world over have talked about entering into conversations with the salmon you have relationships with all of these other beings and they're not there for you to use. They are there for you to enter into relationships. Which, by the way, does not mean you can't eat the salmon. If I consume the flesh of salmon from the Klamath River, I now take responsibility for the continuation of, this, of the Klamath River salmon community. Those creatures who survived in the long run have survived in the long run. You don't survive in the long run by hyper-exploiting your surroundings. You survive in the long run by actually improving your habitat. Even harm your habitat 1% in a year, okay, that means you're taking it from 100% to 99%, next year's going to be 98%, 97%, eventually it crosses zero. You can't harm your habitat and live there. That's not how you survive. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that any way of living is based on the use of non-renewable resources won't last. It can be based on the, the hyper-exploitation of renewable resources, such that every year there are fewer salmon returned than the year before. And the Tala lived here for 12,500 years. This culture has been here for less than two centuries. And the place is trashed, the place is absolutely trashed, but is sustainable. What, what does the word sustainable mean? What the word sustainable means is something that you can do forever, something you can do indefinitely, something you can, you can continue to do, which means it's something you do which doesn't harm the land base. If the, if the actions of this culture were sustainable, 90% of the large fish in the oceans wouldn't be gone. 
this culture is functionally, systematically unsustainable. All this sustainability stuff is simply trying to make this fundamentally exploitative system careen on a little bit longer. I will believe that this, that this culture, any culture, is living sustainably when there are more salmon every year than the year before, and when there's more migratory songbirds every year than the year before, and when there's more native forest every year than the year before. Then we can talk about sustainability, but in the meantime, I don't want to hear about it because it's just nonsense. It's harder to miss what you've never known. And I've never known those huge runs of salmon. I've never known uh, the sky filled with birds. I've never had a 30-year relationship with a tree. I've never even been in a healthy functioning forest. Because by the time I was born, they're all hammered. No salmon here anymore, though. No salmon anymore in the Kootenai River. Because of us rearranging things. <laughs> How could anybody be stupid enough to kill the planet you live on?